Hello, twin citizens and internet denizens. This is Lara. I'm here today to talk to you about that burning question we all run into from time to time. Should I buy this sewing machine? Not a sewing machine. This particular sewing machine I'm looking at online. <laughs> Um, I have actually already made a quick YouTube video about what to look for if you're buying a machine as kind of a snap judgment in person, like say at a thrift store, secondhand store, garage sale, what have you. But I did want to share some ideas for uh, the different considerations you might take into account when you're buying online. Now, the point today is not about space management, money management, or spouse management. Um, if you're listening to this, I assume that you already have decided that you are going to buy a machine, but is the particular machine you're looking at right for you? Well, let's see. First, of course, you do have to look at pricing. Um, sometimes people do expect a slightly higher price for a machine that they are selling online, and it doesn't seem to matter what website or access you're using to look for machines. Um, of course, there are many of them. I'm sure that most of you could name several off the top of your head. I can't necessarily recommend one over the other, um, but the same kinds of thought processes apply to all. But do expect that if you are used to looking at kind of garage sale, in-person pricing, the pricing online shopping might be slightly higher. Um, that kind of seems to be happening because people understand that they're getting a wider audience of people looking for machines. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just something you want to take into account. Um, if you're looking for the convenience of choosing a machine right now versus searching for a machine for some time, expect that you're going to pay slightly higher price. And then, of course, also you have to consider if there's a shipping cost involved. If you're buying a machine from, you know, far away um, or to someone who prefers to ship versus having you pick up in person, you want to consider that cost as well. Some online sources are notorious for not packing a machine well. Um, you know, sewing machines are typically quite heavy and sometimes more fragile than people know. So... If you are buying from an online source and you want to uh, make sure that they're shipping it properly, I don't think it's rude to ask, you know, have you shipped sewing machines before? Do you have a record around that? What are your plans for making sure this machine arrives to me safely? Um, barring that, make sure you use a process or a system for paying so that if the machine is damaged in transit, uh, you maybe have a way to deal with that in some way. If possible, of course, hopefully the listing has photos of the machine. Um, I have occasionally seen listing photos where it's just the machine's table and the table isn't even open, <laughs> which is interesting. I guess that's uh, a good choice for people if, if you really think people are buying uh, the machine just for the furniture aspect of it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with, with maybe even asking for more photos. Um, if you're teetering, especially if the price is a bit higher, uh, if the photos that are with the listing don't include the bobbin area of the machine, I think it's really smart to ask to see that. Being able to see the bobbin area of a machine tells you a couple of things. First of all, it tells you if the person even knows enough about sewing machines to be able to find the bobbin area. Frankly, a little bit of a test. Um, also, it tells you if the area is really clean looking. Uh, that can be an indication that a machine is well cared for, which is a good thing. Also, some machines like the Singer 301 and Featherweights, for example, the bobbin case can be very valuable. Original bobbin cases are sometimes even more highly valued than the machine, depending on the condition of the machine. So you definitely want to see if the bobbin case is in the bobbin area before you purchase the machine. Of course, you can, you can get replacements, but um, that's always something to look for, especially in those particular machines. And I'll have photos of what that looks like on the um, Singer 301. 
Now, since you are buying online, you presumably have a little more time to think about it uh, than when you're buying in person, so you have some homework you can do to decide if this model is right for you. Uh, of course, an individual machine might have its own issues, but if the model of machine is right for you, first of all, see if you can download the manual for the machine. Um, manuals for machines simply get lost very easily, so it's really a lot to expect the seller to still have the manual. So, but see if you can go download it. Most manufacturers do keep free versions of their manuals as PDFs on their website, and it's worth the moment to go check it out. Then you can see the full features available for the machine, whether it's easy to care for it, whether there are instructions on how to oil and clean it. Those are all things that will, will help you make this decision. Does this m machine take standard sewing machine needles? Again, that's something that manual should be able to tell you. There are a couple of ma machines out there that don't take what we consider kind of normal sewing machine needles. Doesn't mean it's a bad machine, but it is something to consider. How am I going to be able to get needles for this machine easily? Uh, how much do the bobbins cost for this machine, and are they easy to find? Do I need to uh, source original bobbins or very high quality bobbins for this machine? Of course, you should always use the best bobbin you can get. But some machines have easier to find bobbins than others, and some machines will have more options for bobbins than others. How much would a new power cord and foot pedal cost? I think I mentioned this in my other video, but that is a piece, even if a machine's been very well cared for, they're, they're fragile, and you don't want electronics uh, that are dodgy to you know, potentially either mess up your machine, mess up your sewing, or, you know, burn your house down. Um, so I almost always consider that I'm automatically going to be buying a new power cord and foot pedal for any machine that I buy. Does the machine have plastic gears that might need replacing? Um, not every machine is all metal. Some machines have belts that need to be replaced at some point. Again, doesn't mean it's a bad machine, but it's something to consider. Uh, how many years are you likely to get out of this machine before you have to do a major repair? Does this machine have a motor that needs lubrication? Again, not a bad thing. My, my Singer 301 that I love does have a non-sealed motor that I do have to lubricate, but in that case, the history of the machine matters a lot. If it's been tucked away um, in a garage or you know, even in a barn for a number of years, it hasn't been cared for, you know, is the machine still worth the investment if you potentially have to either replace the motor or have the motor, um, you know, resuscitated <laughs> by a professional? That that's that's a good question to ask yourself. Are the attachments and accessories for this machine easy to get and or inexpensive? Just like the bobbins, except for you, you can't really run a machine without a bobbin, but. It is nice to know if you're going to have easy to find options for accessories. For example, I love slant shake machines. If you've been paying attention, they're one of my favorites. But my first machine was a low shank, straight shank machine. And I was actually really grateful that for that later as I got more into sewing, that that's a very common style of machine, a very common shape of machine foot. And so when I was just getting into sewing more and just starting to think, well, maybe I do really need a zipper foot, or maybe I do really need something that's going to help me, you know, do really good edge stitching. Being able to find accessories um, from regular sewing machine dealerships or just being able to walk into a store and buy accessories for the machine versus having to really search for it online or try to find trusted sources uh, for feet was really great for me. Um, it's also a class 66 bobbin, and if you don't know what that is, that's okay. But th those are very, very common, so it's very easy to find the bobbins. And so, in a way, it was really lucky that my first machine that I bought, basically without knowing anything at all from a thrift store, um, had features in it that made it very easy to maintain service and find new parts for. So those are my tips. I uh, hope it helps you in your sewing machine journey, whether you're buying your first or your 101st. Uh, good luck and have fun out there. As always, there's lots of information about upcoming classes, previous classes, blog posts about fitting, sewing, everything to do with uh, the needle arts, at least that Lisa and I are interested in at the moment, on our website, 
twinsinneedles.com. That's twins in the letter in needles.com. See you there.